Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Breaking Bad News. A common session they're going to find during your PLOP 2 examination or in medical school. So stay tuned. Breaking Bad News can be challenging. The approach we're going to see can be used when we deliver news about cancer, about death, or a new diagnosis, about new disease. Especially if something's going to affect the patient's life, like type 1 diabetes. The first step we're going to take is introduction. Before that, we're going to wash our hands with the appropriate PPE. Remember, we're in a COVID time. After that, you're going to walk in and you're going to introduce yourself. Who you are, what grade, and what you're there to do to check if you have the right patient to ask for the name and date of birth then explain the purpose of why you're there if you're not the treating physician apologize if there has been any changes and final really important gain consent a couple things to keep in mind is Active listening. This will help us engage with the patient to so keep eye contact at all time. Not from time to time when appropriate. Avoid interruption to so keep, keep your bleep off and your phone off. And remember body language. Try to keep a professional body language. Avoid on cross arms, legs. You can lean slightly forward. That would be really helpful. Now, building rapport is important with the patient. This will make the patient trust you. So you can ask them how are they today, you can offer them a seat, a glass of water. You need to learn to empathize with their emotions. This will help build up rapport. And you will listen and respond to these emotions accordingly. Now we're going to use the spikes approach. This is a helpful way to structure breaking bad news. The S stands for setting. Where are we going to do breaking bad news? The P is for perception. We're going to describe the sequence of events that led to the diagnosis. Invitations. I'll get to this in a later phase. knowledge we need to make sure that we're going to give the content in a digestible manner the content of the news emotions and pathway is going to be how we're going to deal with the patient's emotions and last but not least strategy and summary basically what's going to happen next Now, the setting is really important. Where we do this is gonna make a big difference. So if you're gonna deliver really bad news, even if they're not bad news, keep tissues around, get some chairs, get people to sit down, find a private and quiet place, avoid physical barriers like a desk with the patients or relatives, and never, never break news in the hall or oh, with other people are that are not relevant to the case. Second thing is perception. Now we're going to do a description of the sequence of events that led to diagnosis, whether symptoms that led to a scan, an investigation, that led to hospital, and what information we have now. It's important to assess the patient's current emotions. Make sure you read body language. You can let the patient talk about the symptoms or ask them about the symptoms. And you need to ask the patient what do they know so far? What do they expect? 
always remember to signpost. Now, invitation can be related to investigations. For example, if you're in an outpatient setting or an inpatient setting, some patients might not want to know about the results. So you need to ask them, do you want to know? If not, now or later. Now, knowledge is where things get tricky. We need to make sure we give small amounts of information digestible for the patient. Emotions can be tricky at this point. We need to check understanding. We need to do what we call a warning shot. Phrases like unfortunately, I'm afraid. This could be leading as a warning shot. We need to pause, provide a long pause and then give diagnosis to super words. The pause is necessary to see the reaction of the, the patient and then give the patient some time to see what kind of reaction you get from the diagnosis. Then, emotions and pathway is going to focus in the after events of giving the bad news. That means recognizing and responding to emotions. And we need to do this in a way that shows acceptance, empathy, and concern, if appropriate. Patients might ask you about prognosis. If you know, if you have an idea, you can say, if you don't know, say you don't know. But don't ever give for hopes, that's really important. The last part is strategy and summary. So what's gonna happen next? So you need to lay out a plan with the patient. This is patient is referral to a different service. Make sure you let them know that this is gonna happen. Tell them there is no rush. Always check understanding. See if the patient is under understanding everything you're telling them. Summarize everything. Make sure the patient has questions and make sure you answer them. Offer leaflets or any other information that might be relevant for the patient. And once over, wash your hands, remove the PPE and move on. Now, breaking bad news can be emotionally challenging. So always make sure you reflect after you do this. And if necessary, take some time out. So that's it for now, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again in another lecture with Dr. Luke.